Israel, congratulations on your victory. Um, such a, a technical matchup in there. I mean, watching the two styles play out was, was incredibly entertaining. How did you feel about your performance this evening and your execution? Um, I have to have a look at the tape. Uh, it's, for a fighter, it's really hard to assess myself just straight off the bat and just, uh, you know, when, when I'm still working right now, you know, and I've said this before, like my, my first time when I'm alone is in the shower right after the fight and there's no outside influence and I get to be alone with my thoughts and download everything so I can really accept, uh, assess how I feel first and then after that I might watch the fight and just see, okay, how did I look? But main thing is I had fun in there, like I said I would, and I showed off and he's a good dance partner so I feel like fight at night was well deserved. No doubt about it. Talk about your emotions. I mean, we saw you get a little choked up at the weigh-ins, of course, and you know, this is somebody you admit that early on you patted yourself after, so... Just Why did they fill these up? It's silly. It's annoying. <laughs> I just feel like, well, props. Because I'm trying to have a drink. Oh, water's good, though. Anyway, carry on. Yeah. Uh, no, just but give me your, your emotions. Now that you've got this in the bag, you know, you've got the victory, this was an emotional opportunity, a big opportunity for you. What, what is the feeling like for you right now? feeling um the best way i could describe it was like being in a twilight zone so when i get to download my thoughts alone then i can kind of like ah oh. but one thing is that was cool that was cool as fuck like just uh, <laughs> even when <I'm laughs> he, he caught one of my kicks and i knew he was trying to catch it and like i tripped and as i was getting back up i was like all right here comes the flying knee i've seen this many times and I just slid to the left. And I was like, ah, I've seen this too many. And all, he tried so many tricks that I've seen. Even when I made him faint and he'd react like, you know, like say example, if you react with his hands out, then he'd just bring it back and do the hand kung fu shit. And I'm like, my well, man, I've seen these too many times. Even like UFC 112, Abu Dhabi with uh, Damien Maya. He's trying to bait him to strike. Like, come on, throw your biggest shot. So he put his hands down and like even put us back against the fence. That's how Bisping got caught with an up kick. I'm not stupid, you know. I don't think I look stupid, but uh, I'm smarter than I look. But um, yeah, hands down, getting punched in the face with some measly strikes, and they expecting me to throw a big one. Like, oh, I'm like, dude, it was cool. That was just, it was cool, just a cool experience. And I said that after the fight. Everyone else plays it on EA Sports, and I get to play it in real life with the real dudes. So. I win. Nice. And last thing for me, I mean, this was a, a very crazy day with the way that everything unfolded. I mean, you had this kind of 2019 year mapped out for yourself. Uh, what do you think should happen? I mean, we got to wait and see what's what's going on with Rob. But, I mean, do you feel like you should jump ahead of Kelvin Gaskell now? Do you mm -hmm. feel like what, what do you think should happen next for you, especially as it relates to the title situation? I'll put it this way, three ways. First, in the short term, a shower. I really, really want to just be alone with my thoughts. Secondly, <clears throat> well, if you look at the YouTube, it was just the numbers itself, like the, the, the official countdown on YouTube. Last I checked, it was like 300,000 views. Rob Zorn was like 300,000 views with Kelvin. And me and Anderson, I'm pretty sure our one would have been past a mil by now, a million views. So we've, we've known who the people wanted to see for so long. And even Rob said he didn't care. Good. Now the pay-per-view points. Where do they go? What happens to them? I'm just wondering, just maybe I have to sit down with Dana and Mick and talk because that's a lot of money being left on the table and it just stays in the hand of the dealer when I've done my bit. I showed up to work, you know, unfortunately it was out of Rob's hands. It wasn't in his control. The controller was in player one's hand and I showed up to work. Today. I clocked and I came in early to watch Shane and Kai do battle and then I'm staying late so I can, you know, do all this stuff as well. So I'm working my ass off and I feel like, man, I don't know what the buy rates are because it wasn't really my main event. It wasn't really my shit. They put me in the fucking regular hotel. I didn't get the main event suite either, so shower's not that big. But, you know, the pay-per-view points in, in the medium term, I'm looking at those like, what happens to them? Maybe me and Anderson can uh, split those because we put on a good show. We go fight of the night. And that's a, lot, that's a lot of money being left on the table. So we'll see what's, what happens with that. And in the long term, I'm the number one contender. I'm the guy fighting for the belt. Oh, I'm, I don't care. I don't care. Kelvin or Rob, whoever it is, I'm fighting for the belt. Whoever has the belt, because I see Kelvin walking around with that belt, and I don't know who gave it to him or if he got on the stool to get uh, whatever. Like just, 
I'm fighting for the belt next. That's all I know. I did my job. I showed up to work. Just curious, Israel. Obviously, Dana White, Santana. Do you have any plans to catch up with him before he goes back over to the States after your fight? We always bump into each other in the most odd places. So, yeah, it'll happen again. Destiny. This whole week's just been destiny. I was destined to be a main event, you know, so, yeah. And I'll bump into him somewhere, someplace, and we'll probably talk, shop a little bit, but, yeah, we'll see. And I'm just curious, can you talk us through how you found out you'd be main eventing the card? Where were you? What time was it? And what went through your mind when you realized you are the official main event? I woke up just before 8 a.m., even before my alarm. I woke up in a minute later, the alarm went off. And uh, I closed it off and I saw my family Viber. My family has a Viber page that we just, you know, group chat. And my dad posted Rob's out and I was like, wait, what? And I clicked onto it and there was a screenshot on Instagram. So I hit Instagram straight away and I was like, ah, uh, man, that must suck. I just, for me as a fighter, I, I just knew, I, you know, everything inside, I knew as a fighter, like, fuck, he would be killing himself, like, you know, fuck. It's so close, you get so close and it just gets ripped away from you. And even for Calvin, it sucks for him as well, because, you know, come all this way, work so hard. Think about it this way. If you're a chick and you were the guy, you stopped flirting for so long, and then he comes in like two minutes, or it doesn't come at all, I don't know, whatever. But, yeah, it just sucks. Anticlimax. The biggest anticlimax for them, so, yeah. But that's not my problem. Like I said, I came to work early, and I worked, and I'm staying late, and yeah. This last one from me, Kai, Shane and yourself pick up wins on the same card. City Kickboxing having an amazing showing, you know, Coach Huge, uh, everybody talking about him as one, you know, one of the best coaches out there. What does it mean for you to not only just pick up a win like this over a guy like Anderson Silva, but do it with your team? How does that feel? We're in the trenches together, us three. We're in the trenches together, working hard, working our asses off for so long. So, yeah, the fact that we all got a win, it's, it's history, history in the making, us three, you know, and it puts NZ MMA, uh, Australasia MMA on the map. And even for me, I found out, like in Nigeria, they were playing this live on, on, on a satellite that I used to watch as a kid, DSTV. So, yeah, you know, that's cool. Um, this is this is crazy. For me, I'm, st I'm, I'm still in the twilight zone. I'm, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> as Anderson was saying, wow. But yeah, uh, I'm, yeah, I really want to go have a shower so I can think about this properly. Hey, Zora, just before you go and take a shower, just wondering, obviously this whole storyline here was the younger fighter versus, you know, the legend, and afterwards it was pretty emotional for the both of you. Did this feel like a passing of the torch to you at, at the end of it? Yeah, I said it. This is the end of my, uh, this is the end of the first movie or the first documentary where... I get to fight, you know, the guy that brought me to the game, you know, and even at the, he said, yeah, he's so crafty, even at the wins, like, you know, for me to do this one more time, many fighters have said it before, oh, I'm done with this, and then they come back, so he wants to have one more fight in Kurochiba, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool, he gets to have one more fight, and I get to be a fan and watch that, or stand, because I've always been a stand regardless, fighting as a silver, but, um, yeah, uh, it was cool. The best way I can describe it is just being cool, sharing space with him, playing games with him, and yeah, I think we put on a good show for the crowd, and I don't know why they were booing, I was just like, shut the fuck up, like, it's, people are stupid at the end of the day, sometimes the drunk fans are just annoying me, because I think we put on a good show, and they're booing me when I'm talking, I'm like, shh, but yeah, I'm not here to win fans, I'm just here to win. One of the moments when the crowd actually did go crazy was when you hit a stance and sort of taunted Anderson. I want to say it was at the end of the first round. It was almost like a, a scene from The Matrix. Talk us through it. Was there was there any symbolism behind it? Was it from The Matrix? Was it just something you felt right uh, at the moment? The, it felt right at the moment, but it's from Naruto. So um, a first watch is and Naruto. Okay, I'm gonna get deep. There's a famous anime uh, worldwide, and I got into it by watching the Rock Lee versus Gara fight, and that was episode 48. And eventually, uh, a year and a bit later, I started watching the series. So even at the weigh-ins, at the weigh-ins, when I hit the Rock Lee stance, that was the one. That was the one I hit. 
he stood there with his arms folded like Gara, and I don't even think he knows who Gara is. So then I posted this morning, you know, like I got my, my crew, Black Print FX and Cut Craft, shout out to those guys, because they can do it on the dime, and they just kind of hit this highlight up of just me and my Rock Lee stands, and him as Gara, and just the, the similarity, like it was just like it was just supposed to be that way. For me, it was cool, and I'm like, man, I'm playing this shit for real. <laughs> And in the, in, in the, I can't remember what the sequence was at the end of the first round, but something happened and he missed. And I don't know, I, I can't remember. I have to watch it, I have to see it properly. And then, well, I know it looked cool, it looked cool. That's what, and it's those moments for me. It's, like I said, this was my title fight. I got to beat the guy that took me into the, you know, inspired me to get into the shit. But moments like that, I, like if, I'm sure I've seen a picture already with me standing there with that stance, him and him right there, or there'll be more. Those little moments in time, the photos, the videos, like that, I like those. And yeah, I won't say I live for those, but I like to collect those moments, and that was a cool moment for me. I don't want to take a shower, so I'll just I'll combine the next two. Um, Dominic Cruz was sort of saying on the broadcast that he'd like to see you face Jacare next. Um, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with Kelvin and Rob. You, you've sort of taken a stance here that it's, it's Kelvin or Rob next. Would you, for you, is it a case where you would be willing to wait out? until you get that next shot, and if someone like Jack Ray was offered, you would prefer to wait. And also, timeline-wise, you've had a lot of fights recently, and you, you originally wanted to take that break after New York, you stuck around. Uh, do, you, do you feel like that break's coming, or do you feel like you can't really afford to, given the situation at the moment? I can afford to. I can afford to do what I want right now, because, like I said, every, I think from, was it Vegas? I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take a break. And then, mm, okay, and I get itchy knuckles. Oh, I'll do New York, all right. And then I was supposed to go to Europe and do a little tour, and then this fight came along, and I, I just felt I can't say no to this, so I did it. And now I'm like, I don't know, I mean, it's five fights to the day. I, I did this shit last year, this this time last year, this exact day in Perth. So yeah, and I still had my Europe trip postponed for March or April. Was it March? Or my PA knows, but. For me, for some reason, I'm just like, fuck it. Uh, probably a couple grand I'm gonna lose on it, but fuck it, I really wanna go back home. I wanna go back to Nigeria, so there's an election happening in a couple of days, and it's probably not gonna be smart to go over there during the election times, because I know my people. But definitely March, April, I wanna go back to Nigeria and just touch down. I feel like, it, whatever reason, home's calling me. It's just, I can feel the beacon coming. Uh, I just, I need to go home. So I'm gonna go home to Nigeria, probably, March, April, yeah, so I can wait out for however long I need to because I've done so much for the company. I've played my part and I'm the number one contender. You know, Jacques Ray can fight Calvin. Oh, they already fought already. Get a rematch. I don't know. I don't care. I showed up to work. That's all I know. Um, Izzy, you were saying this week that um, it just felt like any other fight week. Your body, your body sort of knows when it's time. But uh, when you got in the cage, did it actually feel like that or was it, was it just another fight? Yeah, it just felt like another fight. You know, there's moments. In this fight, like when I was coming out, I didn't really, for whatever reason, when I when I when I walked out, I felt like a reptile. I felt like I was in enemy territory, and I could feel my eyes like rapid eye movement. I could just, I was dialed in. I it, it helped me though. It helped me find the shots early, and I was able to rock him in the first round like two or three times. But um, yeah, it felt like I was in. Enemy territory, because I mean, worldwide, everyone loves Anderson Silva, so well, it doesn't make any difference to me wherever we are. You know, you saw me tell the crowd where to go when I thought they were against me. I don't really care. I'm just, uh, yeah. It just felt like any other place, any other, any, any other fight. But it was cool. It was not just any other fight. This was, this was history in the making. This was fun. Some people were saying that um, Anderson hasn't fought in two years. He's 43 years old. He's, he's going to be too slow. Um, his reaction time looked pretty good in there. What did you think of it? Um, not in the first round, but in the second round, there was one jab, two, sorry, there was two jabs. The first one blinded me, came from the hip, and that one came fast, and I was like, oh shit. And second one, I was like, all right, and I was trying not to touch my eye, but he saw, he's a vet, he saw it. It's like, I did something, and he tried to put the, he tried, he tried to put the pressure on. And yeah, definitely our styles are different. The way he attacked me was different from how I would attack someone else. Um, yeah, excuse me, uh, he, yeah, he was good, he's still the guy that, he still got it, 
Um, he's still with it. Some of his attacks, I like, it's, <laughs> it's something he did that I've kind of done by accident before, the way he checked my kick, and I was like, ooh, that was nice. So I'm gonna steal that off him. Excuse me, there it is. And yeah, he still got it, make no mistake. People were saying, like, oh, you gotta go easy on the, on the spider. I was going in there, hopefully take him out, but I'm not stupid. I'm not like everyone else he's fought, where he beckons them on and then I fall into the spider's web. Israel. You said before the fight you knew Anderson better than you himself. Was there anything that surprised you in the fight though? Let me think about that one, hold up. Anything that surprised me in the fight. That jab came really fast, the second though, in the second round. That that was surprising because it made me have to get on my bike. But uh, yeah, that was about it. But everything else, like I was able to read when he called me on, when he put his hands down, telling me to hit him. I'm not stupid. I've seen so many people fall for his tricks. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna fall for his tricks again. <coughs> lastly, you hinted before the fight as well that you might go and live Oxygen after the main event. And I was, that was the plan with me and Dana. So after the bro, and Kelvin would have fought. I said, what happens is I come back out. Not like DC and Brock Lesnar or some like, oh, I'm gonna push you and whoa, 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 you know, like some fake WWE shit. I just wanted to stand there and hopefully for all one and just, just face off for like 30 seconds intensely. And I felt like that would have set that place on fire. That would have just hyped up the next fight straight away if he wasn't too hurt, you know, because it could have been a war. Kelvin, Kelvin's no joke, so yeah. Um, that was the plan, but unfortunately, variables happened, and I was the main event, so, I mean, those pay-per-view points going to go somewhere. So, yeah, we'll see. Hey, Israel. Uh, Israel, congratulations on the fight. Um, first off, um, what, who's your favorite Naruto character? I'm also a big fan. Rock Lee. Rock, Rock Lee. Lee, just because of that first fight. Um, and definitely, he's gonna go on my calf, on the back of my calf as a character. I've got, I've got Toph on my forearm from Avatar, so yeah, Rock Lee's my friend. I, I like him because he works so hard because obviously he's a Taijutsu specialist, everything physical because he doesn't have any, any ninjutsu. So I like the way he works, I love his ninja way, I love the way he put, uh, I like the story behind him. And I like him when he gets drunk and he uses the drunken fence, that's cool. So I respect that, thanks bro. And uh, you fought some of the best strikers in the world. How does Anderson Silva compare to the other fighters you fought in kickboxing and Thai boxing? Uh, as a striker, definitely one of the best. Uh, he could definitely do kickboxing if he wanted to. Um, just I've seen it. I've seen it too many times. Uh, like a lot of the stuff, even the bounce when he started to decide, I want, I want to attack now. I'm like, oh, he's about to attack. All right, get ready. Switch back to and I just. I could listen to my corner, my corner as well, and I could hear what they were saying, and it was clear as day. So, yeah, I saw his leg after the fight was bruised up from the leg kicks, but he didn't show it. He didn't, he didn't show it at all. Um, yeah, he's just a legend in this game, a living legend. You can't take anything away from that. Is he, you know, does the black key we make up the back here? And, uh, and you spoke about Nigerian going home. You have things ever been to Africa. Maybe that's something that you uh, might want to look into. What do you think about that? Me and Dana talked about a lot of things in that room for about 40 minutes. That came up as well. And like I said, DSTV put the fight on live. My dad was getting calls and texts while he was watching the fight. You know, of people like, you know, giving him props, giving us props. So, and I've said this as well, I'm the runt of my people. I am the runt of my people. If you take the football away from some kid and you give him like skills of wrestling, jiu-jitsu, uh, we already have good boxers, maybe some, some kickboxing or whatever. Man, Africans are crazy. And with the, also with limited resources as well in some of those areas. So that's definitely something that's gonna happen in 2020 or 2021. Is, uh, it might be in South Africa first. It doesn't have to be Nigeria first, but South Africa already have ESC. Hey, brother, XA, what time, XA? I see the boy in the back there. Um, 
just talking to the brother in the back. We're just chilling. Uh, yeah, EFC is already in um, South Africa as, a, as an established uh, promotion. I was supposed to fight on there once at one point, but it fell through back in the day. But yeah, Cape Town. UFC Cape Town would be cool. Joburg. Even, yeah, it'd be fucking dude. It would be awesome. It would be awesome just to have like some rumble in the jungle type shit, you know? Hey, it's Ruel right here. Um, congratulations on your fight. Um, I know that there's a really big artist out there right now called Lush Sucks. Um, and uh, you have that amazing mural of you and Anderson Silva and the new mural in front of St. CC. Given um, your fight tonight, what does that mean to you to have that mural up forever? Oh, it's not forever. I'll get buffed down real quick. <laughs> I know that. I don't, but still, we went with like, with like, this is one thing I love about cities like Melbourne. It's it's very it's very cultural with this with, with artists, you know, like, and places for whatever reason want to always just buff them down and take them away. But I feel just keep adding more. I'm not saying it should be here forever. Like, do something else. Let it be there. Let it let some let people express because I, I feel like it brings characters to the buildings to the cities. But that's just me. Um, and it's just cool. I've met Lush Sucks. I know his name, I can't say it, but, <laughs> but I've met the guy a few times, a couple times now. He's cool. He's a nice guy. He, um, he came tonight, actually. He's, uh, yeah, just respect to him just for showing love, and I show love back. And just to, because I'm, I'm a creative as well. I, I, can, I can draw. I can't use a can. I suck. I keep dripping. But I can sketch. I can, I can use um, Illustrator and Design, a bit of Photoshop. And I know the time it takes to, to, to do work like that. So for whenever, even on Instagram, people do fan art of me. I, I appreciate I don't see all of it, but I appreciate it because I know the time and the effort it takes to put into drawing my mug <laughs> on a piece of paper. And it, yeah, I know. I never draw faces because they're hard to do, so respect to them. And I appreciate it. Sweet. Thank you. Hey, he's right, right in front. Um, something you might have not noticed, uh, you mentioned about the fans booing you after you were speaking, but something that uh, was on the big screen, it was actually Kelvin Gastelum on the big screen wearing uh, Henry Cejudo's belt that's, that he borrowed, so they were more booing him uh, than you. There was a lot of support for Anderson Silver in the Yeah, the house. I don't care, but for me, when I was talking, you know, I just heard boos, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck are you booing? They were booing Kelvin. Yeah, oh well. <laughs> there you go. But, what uh, do you call it? Uh, well, uh, what's the thing? Casualties. Yeah. They're all casualties at the end of the day. Trust me, they can turn on me, so it doesn't matter. Like, I don't, like, individually, one-on-one, -on -one, we can be cool, but I know people, people in the group have a tendency to just get stupid. I've seen it happen too many times, and even last time I, uh, not last time, but I think I was here for Rousey home, and I saw how things changed after she got knocked out, and people just straight away turned on her, so that could have easily been me tonight. People. They wait for you. They want to build you up so they can let you fall. And ah, I swear, it's a weird thing with humans, but what else? I, I'm, I don't care. Boo me, chair me, whatever. I'm still going to be here. You mentioned that you didn't know where he got the belt or borrowed the belt. Or again, it was Henry Saludos. But what are your thoughts on, uh, on him wearing the belt all day? And his comments basically saying that he's the champ now by forfeit. What are your thoughts on that? They're saying wrestling, they're saying high school wrestling, this is MMA, this is the UFC, so those rules don't apply here. But, uh, let me see, hmm, I don't know, he, he has a point, he does have a point, but I think sit it out, fight Rob, and then the winner can fight me. As a fan, who do you think Anderson should fight next? He said Nick Diaz, but we've seen that. I don't want to see that again. Um, let me think. You guys have time. Hold on, let me think. I know he and Machida are friends, but that would, that would have been a good fight, so they won't fight. But, Kananir maybe? I want to see him again. I want to see him in action again because I feel like I haven't seen enough of him. And stylistically, he, uh, or he, if, if they were going to fight, uh, I have to think about that one. But Cannonier, uh, what's his name? Cannonier or one more? Let me think. One more. If he goes up to two hundred five, let me think. Who at two hundred five? Hmm. I have to think about the last one. But either Cannonier or Machida, if. If 
Well, I think is Machida still in the UFC? Oh, damn it. Uh, Scott Coker. That jerks. <laughs> but, um, yeah, either one. I don't know. Anderson can do whatever, whatever he wants. He's cool. And just a final one from me. Again, learning this, uh, this presser that, uh, that Anderson's going to spend a few more days and possibly go swimming with the Sharks. Is it something that you might want to do with him? He already swam with a shark tonight inside the cage. But, um, yeah, he can do whatever he wants. He can go swim with the sharks, fly with the birds, wrestle with an alligator, whatever. <laughs> um, me, I'm just going to go have a shower. That's the first thing on my mind. Really, really, really want to go let that water run over me. I have a good one, Adrian. Thanks again. Easy. That's it, guys. Thank you so much. Shankui. Good work, team. Yay. Shut up, Jeff. <laughs>